Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Brandon Blakeway and uh, today we have a very special video. Number one, it's not only just my first video on the channel. Yeah, yeah, clap it up. Clap it up. Your boy is making YouTube videos. He's a tuber. Be sure to subscribe, by the way. I'm trying to hit, trying to hit like a hundred subs and then trying to hit a thousand. So help me run me up. It's free. Subscribe, support, support the kid. You know what I mean? Support the kid. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to be posting amazing videos daily. So you already know I'm going to be up. Hit the subscribe button, turn on your post notifications, like it helps the videos. It will help me get to a hundred a lot sooner than you think. And follow me on Instagram. I made an Instagram. It's cool. You can hit me up on Instagram. You can send me suggestions of videos. We can chop it up. We can do whatever. But Kanye West, I was wondering, dude, when, if ever, I honestly thought it would never happen. But this, I was so excited yesterday. I haven't checked out the podcast at all. Um, I'm a big fan of the JRE, the Joe Rogan Experience, and he has Kanye on there, and they're going to be talking about the reason why Kanye is misunderstood. So, I'm pretty interested in uh, Joe's take and what Kanye has to say, because everything Kanye says is, you know, he's very misunderstood. He's very, I'd say he's very misunderstood. People say Kanye's, Kanye's been Kanye the same since, bro, remember when Kanye was like, dude, George Bush hates black people? Like, that was, think how long ago that was, and people are, uh, he's just himself. You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm not going to say anything. Let's see what Kanye has to say. Let's see what Kanye has to say. The Joe Rogan experience. And I just went on a riff right there, but the thing is, these... But isn't that what yeah. you do, though? Like, yeah. yeah. One of the things that I... Yeah. When, when anybody ever talks yeah. about you to me, mm. they, they, they say, well, well, he's all over the place. Mm. And I say, I think that he's got a different power source. Like, if you That's look at me, bro. the way about one everybody thing interacts with the world, there. if there's a universal power... Most people have like a 20 watt charger. Mm -hmm. The way I describe you, I say, I think that motherfucker's got like a 150 watt charger. Mm -hmm. And these ideas are just coming at him. So you do go on these rants that sometimes need to be dissected into individual things. But overall, you're in incredibly productive. So my question is, why do, you, why do people think there's something wrong with you? Yeah. This well, is, but I legitimately, like you've been medicated. They've, they've, put you away right they've yeah. brought you met to met how did that happen well well I, i'll say these two things i think uh very three-dimensionally i don't think in the black and white lines that i've been programmed to think in and i and i think in full color so when i talk i have to describe a thought in five ways you know we we enjoy food that has multiple seasoning in it we enjoy music that has multiple instruments. So when I talk, it's not a rant, it's a symphony yes. of ideas. And when you collect them, you say, oh, these are all these things that connect. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. That's simply it. But none of the yeah. things you're saying are crazy. None of the things you said are crazy. It's yeah. fascinating the way you think. Because I can see that you're thinking in all these different layers and you're looking at things from all these different perspectives and they all come together out of your mouth in like a tornado of ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone wants to just have a conversation with you back and forth, I could see where they would go, the guy's crazy, he just doesn't stop, he's just ranting. But what I'm seeing is just you're a very thorough thinker. You're thinking at things independently, but you're thinking at things in a, a, a massive perspective. Who convinced you that that's... I'm, I've always wondered, like, dude, why are people so scared to, like, think? Yes, you've kind of been, yes, you've been told certain things like this is that, this is that. But people only question things to a certain extent, right? People, I don't know what it is if it's, if it's fear of, fear of trying to find out more. Is it laziness? Um, and just to question things more like sometimes it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be something that's going to lead somewhere now you know what i mean but just to sit and just kind of like wonder or just cry, try uh, like it's hard to put it's harder to put into words but sometimes you could just question certain things you know and dude it's very hard to try and put this into words but people don't want to question things and like they it, it's like you can do so many things in certain in many ways but when it comes to thinking people just want to think in 
like like it's so limited like people's ways of thinking you know which is kind of i get what joe's saying and uh when he said when kanye did say it it kind of sounds crazy or he said in a world full of lies right when you speak the truth it's kind of crazy and that's a that's so true though but then again you could just be but is it have you always been this way or were you less is it was it less manageable before did you have issues with it before yeah i believe before i found christ and gave my life to god i would try to lean on my own understanding and that's a, the universe is like a, a black hole of information what do you like, mean by your own understanding meaning when people ask einstein said you're the smartest person what would you like to know he his it, einstein's response was i'd like to understand the mind of god meaning meaning god is all-knowing and we can only know or see and for me as a visionary we can only know or see what god allows us to see and what he feels we're ready to see and understand to to maximize what our Maslow's hierarchy and need chart is, you know, what sets our dopamines, what sets our serotonins off, what makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. Basically, like, you know, we, we did a good deed and it's like it was somehow, we're, you know, you know, just doing a beat for a famous per or just doing a beat for um, a local dope rapper really meant a lot to me when I was 14 years old. Doing a beat for just anyone famous that had a major record deal was a lot to me at age 19. Me being able to, you know, put out my own music and put my own, own I was a lot to me at age 24. Meaning, as I grow, God sets new stages in the game of life for me that you get your satisfaction. Like, Maslow's hierarchy of need is like our satisfaction chart. What makes us feel whole and uh, accomplished as a, as, a, as a human being? So as I go through these different levels there's times where i would use confidence when i knew what i was doing and i would use arrogance when i didn't know what i was doing but i'd rather use arrogance than to let someone d uh, diminish my idea of myself because that is what keeps us going hope actually keeps us alive anybody you ask most people is like do you want tomorrow to come and they say yes they, they have they have hope for it but i went from having confidence and arrogance to having faith and faith is the opposite of fear and that created this fearless approach that i have and that's what made now has made me the fearless leader that i am that i've like crystallized into the leader that my mom always knew i would be when kids followed me in preschool the leader that people i kind of i respect that i respect that idea of thinking um it's so easy dude to lose yourself based on other people's uh like what other people think or just based on your influences like we we experience so many things in the world and we try and take in so many things and you kind of a lot of those things just kind of dilute your self being you know what i mean it's very hard to hold on to your true essence of what you are as a human being um being able to stand as you are in your character and being able to focus on that for so long and believe in yourself and just have that belief of who you are in your in your in your core you know even when people are saying all this other stuff is so important because that it doesn't falter dude like you and your essence and your core you'll always be that right and dude it's it's so hard to hold on to that it re and especially as you grow older it's like if you had to think of you, yourself as like when you were a kid like some of the things you used to believe or the ideas you used to hold and the things you said you would do when you were older and now look at yourself it's kind of just like some people used to i don't remember as a kid i'd be like oh dude i never drink ever but i drink now it's kind of like why like what happened do you know what i mean yeah it's fun but also you know the effects of drinking or whatever not to say that it's bad but it's just kind of like that's just like a rough idea of so many things we hold dear to ourselves that we kind of we kind of lose that and uh I don't know how the fuck he did it, bro. Cause for me, like that's like I said, the Kanye's been this. Like I don't think he's changed much. He's probably just gone a bit older, but this was this has been him. Like it's been it's, he's been like this for as long as I've known him. 
or have heard of him. People saw when we changed the sound of music, the leader when we changed uh, the, the, the sneaker industry, the leader in what we're doing with, uh, with farming and with, with shelters. When I was building you know, the homeless shelters uh, uh, a couple years ago and visiting parks and, and then going to Skip Row and understanding the, uh, uh, the di di dynamics and empathizing with what actual mental health issues are. Not someone, you know, telling their truth or being exhausted and then being labeled as such. Like I am. So that's yeah. what you felt happened to you. Like you were telling absolutely. the truth and you were exhausted and they labeled you as mentally unhealthy. Yes, absolutely. Am I saying this right? That yeah. what happened with you is you feel like maybe, or you probably feel like that having this higher calling and recognizing this higher power was the the glue that kept your thoughts together it kept your mind straight and it kept you on a righteous path so yes. instead of being scattered with all these crazy thoughts and being exhausted and being labeled manic mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like we talked before and you were saying that they had you on medication but the medication fucked with your creativity it fucked with all kinds of things or oh, it, it blocked my ability to channel what god wanted me to do but we're all we're all on medication right now. Did you use toothpaste with fluoride today? It blocks your pineal <laughs> gland. And they put children on it. And we put we put our kids on it. You know, we it's inside the, the, the deodorants that we use. It's all these things to create like a disconnect to God to serve that. It's like, are you serving man? Or are you serving the, the one and only master? But what yeah. did they tell you? Yeah. When, when they said that they were going to put you on medication, what did they put you on and what, what did they tell you? One of my favorite things that they did is they put me on this medication that made me uh, gain a lot of weight. And I said, I'm not going to take this. And they said, OK, we got a medication you can take, but you won't gain weight. And this shows you they were trying to kill a superhero slowly, trying to kill genius, trying to make me not feel like I could run for president, make me not feel like I can go. Uh, be born in Atlanta, grow up on the south side of Chicago, go into music, go and win all these Grammys, change the sound of music and the look of stage performances, all that, and then still end up in $53 million of debt. What music industry has people going to the exact debt of the house that they think they're going to buy after the tour is over. And it's, and it's, it's strategized. There's criminals all over. <laughs> Everyone's almost account in about? the music was, industry. It's not about a anti safe place. Wait, hold on. What, the, what the fuck is he talking about, dude? Because they asked him about antidepressants. Why is he talking about the music? Like, what? The, what are you? What's he talking about? It's a treacherous place. So filled with money. As soon yeah. as things are filled with money, they're filled with people that are trying to take advantage of other people. It's filled with money. Bees come to honey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So they put they put you on this shit because you were exhausted. What did they put you on? Um. Um, you know, I'm, I can, I can research. I'm, act, I'm, I'm actually forgetting the exact medication okay. that okay. they had. Um, but what did it do yeah. to you? Uh, you? The main thing that it did is it destroyed my confidence. It made me this shell of who I really am. It like grayed over my eyes. It. It, it made me, it made the Mustang not buck anymore. Mm. They sedated you. Yes. Yeah. And they, what was the, the thought process behind it? When you, when you talk to a doctor about this, what did they tell you was wrong with you? Uh, they, they told me I was bipolar. And I remember going on TMZ and saying, you know, slavery is a choice. And they medicated me for saying that, for having that opinion and saying it out loud. But as I put those contracts up, I'm saying, this is a choice. As I, you know, I, uh, you didn't mean people being abducted and brought into slavery and put into chains was a choice. What you were talking about is people making decisions that would enslave them financially and enslave their life. Yeah, but it was taken out of context and it was taken in the least charitable way and they decided to try to say look at crazy Kanye look at this shit he's saying 
yeah. and then they medicate you. Yes. And the media is always taking anything out of context. He doesn't, seem, he doesn't, he doesn't of. seem sure, though. Of, it kind of feels like, kind of feels like, is this what you meant? And then he's like, yeah, that sounds like a good enough answer. So, yeah. You know what I mean? Because even his yeses, he's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's very hard sometimes to catch his train of thoughts. Like, I get, like, his thoughts are a bit too sporadic, but, like, I get it. Like, the, like when I was saying earlier, like, people seem to think, like, in a very, like, you have to dumb things down sometimes when you, like, I have those things where I think, I think about a million things at once, but I can keep track of them. I feel like he can't keep track of his thoughts to the point where he starts saying stuff and it's kind of like, dude, what are you, what are you saying? You know what I mean? Because it's just, it's not flowing, but I don't know. I guess some people say that's genius because, you know, but it's just like, dude, you, if you can't have a conversation with someone, sometimes it's kind of like, it's hard to interpret what they're saying, you know? And even your interpretation is interpreting someone is what you feel like they're trying to say. They might not even be saying that, you know what I mean? Um, of there's a lot going on in this guy's head, dude. Narrative, yeah. That because there's, you know, like Hollywood and media has controlled so much of the narrative, and then he had Silicon Valley, and that's what's so beautiful about one of my heroes, Steve Jobs, because there wouldn't be a Silicon Valley, or Silicon Valley wouldn't be what it is today if Steve Jobs didn't make information accessible like this, which is still a bit control but it feels like twitter is the the safest fleet freest uh mass platform to communicate on and you know it's like they mess with jack because of that you know you know well it's yeah. it's still censored there's, there's a lot of issues now but i think that's mm -hmm. internal i think that's people that are working there that are woke that want to stop people from saying certain things and there, there's a lot of struggles with that today. And I, I, it's unfortunate because I, I do agree that it's an, an unbelievable way to get ideas out there. Yeah. It's a, but it's also, it's a new thing. And it's mismanaged by the people that use it often. They don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it. Yeah. Every version of anything that man has made will be flawed. <sighs>